podcast. I'm Michael Weekman. Welcome to Art. Today we're going to be talking about the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden and I'm going to be showing you around on a virtual field trip. So come with me and check out all these different sculptures that are mostly from the modern art time period. Uh, I'm excited to show you. This is probably the most prominent work, the most photographed work and this is the cherry on a spoon sculpture. Uh, the sculpture garden is found outside of the actual most viewed contemporary art museum, which can be found just, yeah, just to our left here. So I'll show you some uh, shots of that as well. But let's walk around together and go on this virtual field trip. I'm excited. by George Chagall. He is an American sculptor. He's an awesome sculptor and he basically created this in 1988. He does a lot of unique works where he talks about uh, kind of what it's like to be a simple man. So these are not like glorified figures. This is like an old balding guy. I wanted to show it to you. Enjoy. Have a unique sculpture by Deborah Butterfield. She was another American sculpture sculptor who created awesome work. Uh, there's these works throughout the whole entire United States. Um, they're always horses. There's actually I think two in Utah, one up in Park City and one at the Utah Museum of Art. Yes. Um, and I thought it would be kind of cool just to see that you can see these same sculptures, these same style sculptures of basically driftwood sculptures of a horse. Um, you can see them all throughout the United States. So people are having this experience, this wonderful experience of how she put together this wood in the shape of a horse um, throughout the United States. So I thought this work was really interesting. You kind of see the juxtaposition of the coat and the space and the way that sure the coat tells a story just like I want you to include in your work I want you to include items that are interesting enough that they tell a story and then this face sure you can see it all but they choose just to show you a little bit include items in your work that tell a story and think sometimes about how you can tell a story with less than the whole picture those are the two things I really want you to think about with this work. Alright, so behind us we have a work that's actually more of a work of art than a architecture. But it was created by Frank Gehrig, who's one of the most famous architects in basically contemporary art. Um, this was created in 1986 and um, I, if you've watched the video about Chicago you will have also seen a work from him really right in the center of Chicago. He created a lot of work in Chicago and this is one of his only works that's in the sculpture garden. But it's kind of interesting because you can really see the armature of the sculpture. So inside of this glass sculpture you can see the wooden beams that is constructed to hold it up. And with that armature, it kind of breaks away from this, um, this idea that was in the past of the fact that you'd want to cover that up. So this was the start of all sculptures, but everyone covered it up. So in Gary's work here, you can see how he actually not only shows it, but he celebrates it. And he brings it to the forefront of the work. So enjoy this work by Frank Gehry. Um, he's one of my favorite artists slash architects, and this is one of his rare works of art rather than architecture. Frank Gehry's awesome, totally worth Googling and checking out more. James Turrell has this unique artist 
um, passion, an artist's movement, where he takes and he uniquely looks at the way that we as human beings look at the sky. So in this room right here, you have actually heated benches, and they're pointing upwards to this hole in the sky where you can basically have the disconnect of all of your surroundings besides the sky. So it makes, like, it makes it seem like the sky is so close, and it's something that you really can't experience on a film. You have to have this experience in person. James Turrell has worked all over the United States, but actually has spent about the last 30 years creating this crater um, in Arizona, which isn't too close, or it isn't too far away, and I'm actually really excited to go check it out, but it isn't open yet. But he's been working on this crater for 30 years, taking this huge, basic mountain and creating the mountain to look at the sky and be the best place in the world to look at the stars. But here's James Terrell's Sky Pesher. Here's a sculpture by Louise Nevelson. She is a pretty interesting lady who created all this different work where she would like take and just kind of start piecing things together. And as she would be piecing them together, she would progressively find her final image, which in this sculpture you can see is kind of beautiful. Sculpture. I actually had to wait basically in a line to get on the sculpture because people love playing with things. People love basically getting into their childhood abilities to play with art. So think about how you can maybe do that with your own artwork. How you can play with it. How you can make it movable, interactable, bendable, shakeable, almost fall offable, and enjoy the idea of playing with your art. sculpture garden you get these works that maybe you don't understand and what I encourage you to do is not just peculiarly look at them like what I want you to actually maybe grab your phone or research it find out a little bit more about Ellsworth Kelly who created this work which is actually really peculiar and it looks really kind of simple but why does it look simple what is the artist trying to represent so sometimes when you're at a sculpture garden, you actually have to take it as an assignment as a human being who's interested in the world to dig deeper into what the artwork could mean. So as you can see behind me, sculpture gardens become this social place, this place where people will meet with friends and walk around and enjoy the artwork, but mostly enjoy each other's company. I personally remember hiding in some bushes, taking pictures of my friend who was proposing to his future wife. I remember all these different events that had happened at the Sculpture Garden because of the fact that it is such a social place. It's like a piazza of Italy. It's, it's a place where people can come and just be people. And how beautiful is that? <laughs> 